everyone. This is Gail. And yes, I'm still working with scrap. I have got so much, and I really need to get rid of it before my move. So I thought today I would show you an idea of something you can do with your scrap. I do believe I'm going to combine some. I'm going to leave that one out. I'm going to combine the blue with the green and the purple with the red. And I'm going to, maybe I'll roll these out first. But I'm just going to roll this out on the thickest setting of the pasta machine. <laughs> And then I'm going to, maybe I'll shred it up a little bit, just so it's not too much red and too much purple in one spot. I'm just going to try to combine it. I'm sorry if you're tired of working with scrap. But unfortunately, when you work with polymer clay, it's, it's just uh, something you end up with. And a lot of people, like me, I've just been leaving it in my bin and not doing anything with it. So let me try to close these in a little bit where they're stuck to something. And I'm going to run this through the pasta machine a couple times. I think I'll fold the purple in because there's some purple there. You're going to need a solid sheet. Okay, it's beginning to blend a little bit too much for, for me right now, so I'm going to stop. I might use this side as the visible side. But what I'm going to do is just make a few little, uh, I don't want to call them bowls, maybe a little dish. But take a lot, one of your cutters, whatever shape that you want. And cut a shape that you like. And then we're going to take this and we're going to condition this, and not condition it, but roll it into a long strip. And all this was done on the number one setting. And what I'm going to do first, let me move this, let me put this on a patty paper so it'll be easy to move around. I think I want that to be at the bottom of my bowl or dish. And I'm going to trim off. Oh, I'm zoomed in, aren't I? Sorry. I'm going to trim off the rough edges and make it as square as you can on each end. And actually, this is a little bit too wide. I'm wondering if I can cut it in half and use both pieces. But what I was thinking about doing, or what I'm going to do, is I'm going to take this and put it along the outside of this base. Now this is raw clay to raw clay, so it should stick, but I think, just to be safe, I just want to make sure I had enough I'm going to use some poly paste. If you've never tried this, you really ought to. It's very, very it's like liquid clay, except it's, fit, it's thick and pasty. And it's made by Donna Cato. And if I'm not mistaken, it's on sale now at Hobby Lobby or on clearance. 
So depending on when you watch this video, it's possible you could get some more. I'm going to work on one side of it. Well, I'll go ahead and do all of it. But this will help the clay stick together. Love my poly paste. And if you don't go to Hobby Lobby, uh, the poly paste is also available at prairiecraft.com, which is Donna's website where she sells her products. If you're ever interested in any of Donna Cato's products. Alright, well, I'm going to pick this one up just because I like this color here. And I'm going to place that down in the little groove. And I'm going to press this. And let, excuse my hair, but I have to get over it. To see where and I did it wrong let me flatten this out a little bit because you want these two to meet at the point and I'm a little bit off the point but I think it will still work but make sure your clay is adhered and I think I'm gonna go Actually, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to cut a straight line. Here. So these two pieces will go together. Let's see. If I do it this way, it needs to, this corner needs to come off. So I'll just bevel it this way and then that will go in like that fits very well and this is just a very simple project It's something you can do with in just a few minutes. If you'd rather have decorative clay, you can use your decorative clay. But personally, since I had to get rid of my scrap, I thought it would be a perfect... It's just a little bit too long, but the perfect way to use my scrap clay. If you want to add a little poly paste in there, that's fine. I may do that. Let me just take a toothpick. Because I don't want to take a chance on this falling apart when I get it full. You can use it for your rings. Paper clips. Anything that is small and you just want to keep. Keep in a, you know, keep organized so it doesn't go all over everywhere. I've got lots of stuff like that. So these are things that I will probably use in my new studio. And if that day ever comes, now I will just bake it just like this. Yeah, I'm going to go around. A good thing to do maybe with your blade, the blunt side of your blade. Just go around it like this to make sure that it's stuck to the base and not sticking out. Matter of fact, if you wanted to, you could take your cutter 
It's just the one I used. I was going to put it on the inside, but I don't think that's going to work. No, nope, that's a small, that's too small. But there's one little bowl, dish. It's not a bowl, it's a little dish. Then I will put over here to bake. And while I'm working, I may as well See, I'm, I'm reducing my scrap colors, my scrap pile. That's a little bit smaller. But now I'm going to put the two, the blue and the green together. Actually, I'm going to chop this up before I put it in the blender, in, in the blender, in the uh, pasta machine, just to mix the colors up a little bit. Doesn't have to be small pieces unless you want to. Kind of press them together on the edges and then roll from the top. Kind of mash it down a little bit. Turn it over and mash it down. And just do this until it's thin enough for you to put into your pasta machine. I'm messing up my, my measurements here. some reason my mat is sliding and it doesn't usually slide. Another good thing about the poly paste, if you knock it over it doesn't spill. I think it's probably thin enough to go in my pasta machine now. Let me just see what we come up with. Okay, now another shape I pulled out that I thought would work well is a Hamza. I don't know if you've ever seen these before. They're a lot in a lot of the cultural religious beliefs. It's also in the Jewish belief. It's just, it's supposed to be a, a symbol of God's hand. God's hand. And they're usually decorated. I've got several. I've done a video making some decorated ones. But I... If I pull that up, I don't know if it would work or not. Let me put this on a piece of patty paper. Well, I didn't cut this very well, did I? Most of this is just brushed off. 
and then I clean off my work surface so I, so I don't get all these little crumbs in my way. But I think I want that to be the inside of this one. And I'll take this, cut off the scraggly part, and roll this through the pasta machine to get a long strip. Again, you want to cut off your ragged edges. Make sure all your edges are straight. I think I'll make this one this thick. I'm going to take these and ball them up because this is not going to be enough to go around the whole thing. Make sure it's all pressed together. Make another strip. And I can cut from the same, make use the piece I've already cut as a pattern so that I can make sure they're at least both the same size. Okay, let me, I'm just looking to see which side I want. I'm going to cut this off because it didn't go all the way to the end. And let me just take my cutter, just out of curiosity, and see how much clay. Okay, so that's about right. I don't think I can put the cutter on here to use as a guide. Because it's just, of course, it's the same size as the base, so I really can't use that. I was going to try, but let me use my poly paste. I got a bunch that time. Have to spread that one around a little bit. You don't need a lot. Just just enough for the two um, pieces of clay to stick together. But you'll find your clay won't slip as much using the poly paste like it does when you use liquid clay or the other things because it just slips and slides. So what I think I'm going to do, I think I'm going to start here at the bottom and come up this way. And I'm going to cut this blunt. Then 
Then I can bring that one there and just cut that blunt. And this should be enough to use on the other side. Oops. Perfect. Of course, you're going to want to reinforce your seam with the poly paste. Just take a little bit on a toothpick. And then same thing over here. That's not the right side. I need to put it on this. And then this one, okay, and then the other one, wipe this paste off my fingers. Go ahead and do this when I start. So that will meet up there. And you have to bend it around where the fingers are. So let me just go ahead and cut it at the right. I don't know that that's right. It's a little bit long, I hope, because I'd rather cut it long than to not have enough. Let me do it this way. This one's kind of skinny, so I'll go back to the toothpick. And again, you'll want to go around it. The only place I'm going to have a problem is right here, and I, I need to get this use this to kind of bend my clay. The clay needs to bend a little bit right there. It needs to bend a little bit right there. It doesn't seem to want to hold the bends. Let me get my square pairs. I'm just going to take out the small one. This is Teresa Salgado's tool. And just re put this in here so I can really press these corners together. They're wonderful if you want something straight. If I could just get this to stay, let me pull this up maybe. And then push that down. Yep, 
even if it just gives you the hint of a little bit of curve, and I think that's good. And again, make sure all of your seams look good. And I'm going to bake this in the oven. So I'll be back after I bake my, t my two dishes. Okay, my boxes are all baked and out of the oven. And, you know, they're stuck together pretty good. So you will notice there's few little spaces in here uh, between the sides and the back where it, it wasn't pressed up really good against the clay when I baked it. But what I thought I would do, starting with the inside, I thought I would coat it with some uh, liquid clay. And I used clear Kato Poly Clay. And go put a good amount in there. And I'm going to make sure that it gets into all the little crevices. Just to seal that up so that nothing will... You know, if you put something in here, it won't fall through any cracks. And this will also give it a little bit more of a smoother finish. Now you can do this a couple of ways. You can put it on here and put it back in the oven, which is what I'm going to do. Or you can put it on here and... Um, use your heat gun. And I use the heat gun for small surfaces. I don't think I would do it on a large surface like this. I'm just not sure how well that would work. But I'm coating the inside pretty well. And I will put this back in the oven and I'm going to raise the temperature a little bit. I usually I bake my things at 275. And I'm going to try to get it up here on the rim without going outside. Whoops. Oh, it didn't. And uh, it doesn't need to be baked very long. But I think I just think it would give a little bit more integrity, plus a smoother finish. You don't know that you want a uh, rough finish on the inside of a dish like this. You want it to be nice and smooth. This one didn't have the cracks in it that the other one did. This one stayed pretty close to the edge, but I just want this on the inside of my bowl. I'm just going to make sure the inside is coated. Now you can do the outside too, but I honestly thought about doing some of the glitter clay, that glitterific, not glitter clay, glitter paint. That glitterific paint that I bought. I thought I would put some of that around on the outside just to give it some bling. Everybody likes bling. But I'm going to put this back in the oven. Put my brushes away. And I'll be back after this cures. Okay, here we are with the uh, insides are nice and shiny and smooth because I used the liquid Kato. And there's this one. So now I have two little dishes that I could put paper clips. I could probably put some of these things that I keep on my desk in them so that they don't, I don't have to start looking for them anymore. My toothpicks. Here's a paper clip. I have so many little things that I keep here on my desk and it would probably help me if I had something else to put them in. So now I have two. I've still got some scrap left. I might make a couple more. But just pick out your favorite cutter 
try to keep the lines simple. You see I did end up getting the little divots there, so that does look like a hand. And uh, but just get your favorite cutter and cut up a piece and then cut a strip and make your own little dish. So I hope you like this. I'll be back soon with another video. Bye-bye.